here. My name's Anthony. I'm with Milwaukee Power Tools. I'm the territory manager out here in Southern California. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Uh, today, we're going to go over some of our uh, new products, some of our, our battery technology, uh, some of our motor technology, and, and uh, we're going to burn up a couple of our competitors and we'll show you exactly why uh, Milwaukee's number one. All right? Yep. Cool. So, um, first thing is, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Milwaukee's strategy for success. We want the right products, we want the right distributors, we want that end user demand, we want the right promotions, and we want to be profitable. Uh, being here today, we think you guys are the right distribution. After today's training, I hope you guys think that Milwaukee is the right product. Uh, as far as end user demand, we're driving that for you. We have over 300 million impressions uh, in 2011 in uh, popular trade uh, magazines like Popular Mechanics and things like that. So we're not just going to give you the tools and go sell it. We're going to help you sell it. We're going to help you sell it. We also have guys out in the field called our job site solutions team. They actually work with end users. They can actually go on to the job site and actually uh, push our, our tools at an end user level. So they will help you as well. Uh, the right promotions. Every quarter we have the promotions coming out. We believe we have some of the best promotions, the most aggressive promotions. So we'll also use those to help you uh, <coughs> sell stuff. Uh, also being profitable. Of course, you know, we're a business, we're trying to make money. You guys sell stuff, we're gonna make money, you're gonna make money. Uh, that's why we're partnering up with you guys today. Cool, so uh, as far as Milwaukee, when I say Milwaukee, what do you guys think of? What, what comes to mind? Sons on, right? Sons on. Right, right, exactly. Sons on. Those are the tools that kind of made Milwaukee Milwaukee. Those are our core core tools right there. Saws on, drills, whole hogs, right angle drills, grinders, band saws, right? That's what we've always been known for. Uh, Milwaukee, we're getting uh, battery technology now. We're getting hand tools, test and measurement tools. So we're dealing with everything. Um, what we're trying to do, we used to focus on this stuff, right? In the past 20 years, we kind of lost our focus, kind of a little better for generators, nailers, a little bit of everything. We kind of, last five years, refocused and really, you know, refocused our core trades here. It's going to be the electrician, the model, the plumber, the neuro, and the HVAC guy. Uh, those are good guys we're going to be focusing on. Those are our core trades. So, instead of coming out with all these random products, we're really going to focus on these niche products. Um, one of the reasons why we're here today is to talk about our, our battery technology. We've got some of the best batteries out there. 12 volt is our F12 line. We're number one in 12 volt out there as far as any company goes. As far as 18 volt, we're the fastest growing. Uh, we're taking market share every year, double digit growth. Uh, 28 volt, we're number one. We're number one in 28 volt. So, uh, battery, as far as battery technology, we, we definitely have one of the best power platforms out there. A lot of people are on the first generation, we're on our third generation of lithium ion. We do own a patent on lithium ion. So, so the first thing I want to kind of go over is uh, our battery technology. Uh, you guys all heard of lithium ion technology, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's, what's been out there is this, this stuff called liquid cadmium. Uh, great stuff about 20 years ago, uh, but it's very, very toxic to the environment. It's very, very limited as far as power, and it's got paid power. So if you ever use like a NICAT drill, Get three quarters of the way down, you get like this. You almost use it as a hand tool or something like that, right? That's uh, that's the caddy. Um, I can I mean, I'm sorry, lithium ion, you get sustained power, so you get full power all the way to the end of the battery, and then it'll just drop off. That's lithium ion. So, with our red lithium ion, actually, we're getting 20% more power, 20% more torque on the tool you put it on, 40% more life, and then the runtime is also 50% greater now. Uh, things like the heat in the past would affect battery being out the truck. The, the batteries deplete, right? The cold also affects it. That will not happen with our red lithium batteries. That should protect against that. Electronics actually protect against that. You notice a lot of these guys don't even have electronics in their battery. So, first one we're going to go over is, is the most popular battery out there right now. Um, it's about 20, 30 years old. It's the DeWalt NICAT battery. It's the number one sold battery out there. 20 years ago, it was probably top of the line. 20 years later, they haven't changed the darn thing. Look at these things, paper cells. One of these things gets wet, one of these cells goes out, the whole battery's done. Uh, does anybody know the number one reason why batteries fail? fail? I'm going to tell you. It's uh, feel like people now. drop them. People drop them. You know, you think about it. They toss them around the trucks all the time, right? Yeah. So, so you definitely want to protect the battery. So we did that. We put little shock absorbers in here. So if you drop this thing, it'll actually be absorbed by the little shock absorber. There's actually one on the bottom, one on the top. You look at the NICAD one. There's actually nothing in here, just a piece of plastic. You drop that, it's, you know, I'll get damaged so. uh, The Makita one, there's no cushioning in there either. You drop this, it might probably break. It's very flimsily made. The battery's very solid. 
Uh, also, notice that there's no electronics in the, 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 the wall. Electronics protects you overheating, over torquing, things of that sort. The reason why they don't put electronics in here, think about how the battery's designed. This part actually goes in here, like that. There's actually no room for electronics in here. Where would they put it? The motor's actually right here. There's no room for electronics. So that's why they don't have electronics in this room. There's no room for it. And their new stuff, they do have electronics, but their, their old stuff, there's no electronics in there at all. Makita, they do a better job. They put some electronics in there, right? What these do, they, they turn on a fan in your charger to cool the battery down. That's what that electronic does. So you can still torque this drill, uh, misuse this drill if you really wanted to. A um, little better built, definitely better built, but still it's got some issues with it. Uh, in Milwaukee, we have those shock absorbers, like I said, in between each cell. There's a little overweld, so the cells don't actually move at all. And plus, we have electronics, the most electronics out of any battery out there. Our electronics are uh, pretty much talking to the tool, talking to the charger. They're in constant communication, so there's no over torquing. Uh, say you have the wrong setting or something, my drill will actually stop, and you have to back out and start over again, or something else might burn out. I'll actually show you guys that a little later today. So, the wall drill, paper cells, no electronics, 20 year old technology. The Makita, they do a better job. Still, uh, not very good build battery. Uh, you're actually, electronics will turn on a, a, a fan in the charger. The Milwaukee, you do have overload protection. The, the electronics actually tell you how much fuel is left with the battery. It's also protecting against temperature as well. Uh, one Milwaukee battery equals about six of these, nine of these. So if you are trying to save your customer some money, uh, maybe some headache for you guys later on, uh, we do have one of the longest warranties with runtime on our batteries compared to everybody else. There's a lot of features on here to protect the end user from over torquing, overheating, things of that sort. Uh, three year warranty on this battery. Yes, sir. The Milwaukee, the runtime is nine times longer than the Milwaukee. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's the life of the battery. The life, life of this battery. So I will have this battery uh, nine times over compared to uh, oh, this guy. Okay. Six times over this guy. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through about 60 before one of these goes out. And you look at the warranties, guys. Uh, most companies apply stand behind the product. Uh, that's why we have one of the longest warranties out there. Usually, if the warranty is 30 days, I won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the warranty on the lithium ion 1812 battery? Ours? One year? Uh, Milwaukee? Yeah. Three years. Three years. Three years. Okay. Milwaukee has a three year warranty on their batteries and a five year warranty on their tools. It's the longest warranty out there. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's battery technology. Does anybody have any questions about batteries and, and lithium ion and things of that sort? So with our, our red lithium battery, we get 20% more power, 20% more tool, uh, torque until you put it on, 40% more runtime, and 50% more life of the battery. Yes, sir. What about length of charging, charging time? That's always important. Charging time? Outside. Yeah. 45 minutes for the big one, 30 minutes for the, for the compact battery. 12 volt is 30 minutes. Yes, sir. It, yeah. It's actually some of the quickest uh, charge right. times out there. I just charged this, this, uh, this wall 45 minutes. Makita is about 30 minutes. So one thing with the, the Makita is, you notice that it, it says three amp hour batteries, but what's going on here is they cannot charge their battery all the way up fully. If they do, you're getting uh, a lot of that uh, cell depletion and damage to the battery. That's what's going on here. But that's why we have electronics. That's that. So we got to charge all the way full, turn all the way down. It has to only go about three quarters away. You charge the full, you start uh, damaging your battery like that. Uh, that's all. I have one more question. What's up, man? Yeah, you said it was number one in every battery, but the 18. Why is that? Uh, 18. Actually, the wall pad is number one in 18. We're taking that's the dry cell. Huh? That's the dry cell. That's this the, the night pad, yeah. Why is that? This has been around the longest as far as any of these batteries been around. Oh, it's number one seller. You're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, our batteries definitely have got more runtime, more power now. So that's battery technology. Any other questions with batteries? All right, cool. So the next thing I want to go over is, I'm sorry, motors. Does anybody know the three things that make a motor powerful? Armature. Stator and coil. Coil? So the stator. Coil is the copper, round yeah. copper, right? Okay. So that's definitely one. Uh, another one is, is the type of magnets you're going to use, and then the number of poles you have on, on that motor. Horsepower. Horsepower? Yeah. Well, that's all going to be generated through the amount of copper. The amount of holes you have and the, the type of magazine. 
So, so in the past, uh, what most people use are these can motors. You're finding them here like blenders. You still put them in their drills a lot. This is uh, the older technology. What's going on is they're switching over to these open frame motors. Open frame motors. You guys see these things? Something like this. A little bit different, a lot smaller. You're getting a lot more power out of these things than these old plunky can motors. So, what well, first thing I said was the, the amount of uh, uh, copper in your motor, right? To determine how much power you get. I'm comparing all three of these guys. This is the Milwaukee, it's the largest one. The Walt and the Makita. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the Milwaukee one definitely has more copper. Take my word for it. I'll pass this around, you guys can look at it uh, in a sec here. But uh, yeah, the Milwaukee definitely has the most. The Walt over two, and then the Makita actually has the least amount of copper in there. The next thing I've said was the type of magnets they use inside, right? So on the Pita one, they got a uh, magnetic paste, they do ground a bunch of magnets, and the paint turn into paste, they kind of smeared in there. Look, I just took 50 inch pounds of torque out of that. <laughs> um, next one is the wall. They use these pin magnets. Good uh, rare earth magnets, like the ones we use, but they, they kind of shice these little pins, they kind of plug them in there, right? Uh, good, more, more uh, magnetism out of that one, but uh, still not as good as ours. We use these neodymium laser cut magnets. These are the most expensive magnets they have out there. And plus, we also throw four poles in there. One, two, three, four. So we still have a 10 inch pole. We get more uh, torque out of that. Whereas the wall is only two poles. One, two. Kita uses that cheap magnetic paste, but they do get four poles in there. So they use this cheap magnetic paste, but they have four poles. That's, that's okay. The wall, these pin magnets, they use two poles. Milwaukee, you get four holes, you have down magnets. So we're getting we're kind of combining everything. Best of both holes in this one bag. So the most copper, best magnets, the most holes. So one thing I want to do is kind of pass these around. And one way to tell the strength of the motor, you pull them apart like this, I'll tell you how strong it is. So if you look, the heat up, wow, let's just pull that apart, right? The wall is a little bit harder. Actually, the, the, the Milwaukee should be the hardest one. And actually, watch out for your fingers, because they will kind of jam up in there. So let's uh, start all over here. Let's go. So that's the Milwaukee. That's how you can tell us from there. Next one, hard to take out. Watch out for your fingers. So, so that is uh, the motors. Does anybody have any questions on the motors themselves? Yes, sir. Is there a difference between the material, the stator, the actual the piece that's the holes and magnets and the windings together? Uh, I believe it's the same material. I'm not 100 sure about that. The biggest thing you want to know is, is the amount of copper, right. the type of magnets they got on there, and the poles. That's going to be the biggest thing on the motors that, that you want to know about. And then actually, since these open frame motors have come out, there's actually one step, we've taken it one step further. Uh, you guys heard of Russia's technology, Russia's motor technology? I think Nikita has one tool out there, it's like 800, 900 bucks. It's a very expensive technology, but very, very good. Uh, so what we've done is actually incorporated that technology, added a bunch of our electronics in there. Uh, now we're calling it our <coughs> fuel drills. So these drills you're actually gonna start seeing here pretty soon. They're a Russia's motor system. You're getting 750 inch pounds of torque out of this compared to our regular hammer drill, it's just 500. And it's all compatible with all our, our stuff right now. Everything's compatible. We're not going to come out with a new line and make buy a whole new set of batteries. Everything will fit our current stuff currently right now. Uh, a lot of competitors, they said they did that. They've gone, probably went, they've gone away from that. Okay, so the motors are getting around. Cool. So the next thing I want to show you is it's kind of how the drills are kind of made. Uh, we use all steel gear casings on our drills. So you drop these things like a shatter a million pieces. It's not a flexible shot. It's all steel. Uh, it might give a little bit more weight. This is a lot more durable. Uh, this is the Makita chuck, it's plastic. This is the wall chuck, it's plastic. Our, our Milwaukee chuck, it's an all metal chuck. All metal chuck. I'm going to pass this around also to show you guys. I know, we got one Milwaukee, it's the metal one, the plastic part of the Makita. And then uh, one other thing I was telling you, we have electronics in our batteries. We also have electronics in our drills too. 
uh, again, to prevent it from opening over the years and things of that sort. Uh, Makita, no electronics in their drills. They had some electronics in their batteries, right? But again, there's no electronics in their drills, so the drill is still vulnerable to the torque and overheating of that sort. Wall, no electronics in their drill. Why? There's no room for it, right? There's no room for it because of the type of how the battery was built. There's just no room for it. Where would you put it over? Uh, in Milwaukee, we definitely have electronics in there. But again, the, the drills in constant communication with the battery, with the charger. So, hey, the, the, the tool's telling me I need this amount of power for the battery. So, it's not, it's, it distributes uh, different amounts of power to different types of tools. Whereas other companies will pay the same amount of power to every tool. Yes, sir. You see, uh, are the electronics uh, vulnerable to uh, make your drill weaker? I mean, as far as like if it's dropped or. Uh, it shouldn't. Uh, uh, anything it should actually just improve it. So if you damage electronics, yeah, it's gonna affect it definitely. Both our five-year warranty. And if like that happens, you tell them don't you didn't drop it, then we'll fix it. What's up, man? The five-year warranty on additional electronics. Uh, under normal use, you drop it in a bucket of water, you throw it off a five-story building, they're gonna probably void the warranty. Drive it over uh, with the truck or something, probably void the warranty. So if you drop it in a bucket of water, um, is there any kind of warranty at all with electronics? Well, I'll tell you this, it, it, it will cover about 90% of the stuff. It honestly depends on the technician. If I open this thing up and it's just coated in mud, probably wouldn't cover that a little bit, you know? It's, it's, they cover a lot of different things. You shoot it over to me, I'll make them cover it. Nice. <laughs> yes, miss. Yes. Anthony. What we do is we actually have an authorized service center in different states. Here in California, it's in Anaheim, California. But say you're too far from that service center, right? We have other mom and pop shops that are authorized service centers that are also doing the fixing. But say you didn't want to walk into there either. Say uh, you just wanted to eat one of your house. We actually offer e-service where we will pay for the freight there and back. You print out a little prepaid shipping label, you provide a box, put whatever the tool or battery in, fill out a couple bits of information, and watch it ship back to you in five days. Whether it be to here or you know wherever, Canada. Canada yes, we definitely do. We, we definitely do business in Canada. Uh, actually, there's there's definitely service centers up there, but you know if they're not near one, online is probably the best way to do it. It's our e-service. You go to MilwaukeeTool.com, and it, it should be self-explanatory. If you can't figure it out, you go shoot me a call. I'll walk you right there. <coughs> Other questions, guys? Cool. So let's go into the, the new product part. Um, you guys sell any tools like service technicians or uh, maintenance guys, MRO guys, or people that, that run big facilities like this? All of the yes. above. All, the All of the above, right? You see a lot of forest lighting in these places? I wonder how they're changing it right now. It's probably a guessing game. They're probably going up there. Maybe it's the ballast, maybe it's the light bulb, maybe it's the pins. They really don't know. They got to pull everything out, the ballast out of the back and then check everything. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's a lot of work. So right now what we've done, we actually saw that issue. We created a tool for that. <laughs> so I had this light off, and this thing's off. I can actually put it into lamp mode. I'll put test, and actually light this thing up and show me all the gas in the tube right there. I can also put it into ballast mode, put it to the end, test it, it'll beep. Oh, hey, my ballast is bad. That's what I need to change out. Or I can pull it out and test the pins. They'll tell me the pins are bad. So, Something like this would actually save me about half the time of changing it. In a big facility like this, there's a ton of force and lighting. Something like this might make sense, right? It's like right. time. Yes, sir. And that be used to test on LED lighting as well? No. It's only force and lighting. For only force and lighting. And also, there's also limitations to force and lighting. It will not do magnetic. So some of the older technology, like the magnetic force and lighting, this will not work on. Any T, T thing, uh, T, uh, T15 or whatever the, the, the light bulbs are, this will work on any of those. <laughs> So service guys, MRO guys, they're good guys like this. Any guys running hospitals, uh, schools, that's something like that. Those are the people you guys want to sell this to. Also, just in addition, we know that you know, these guys are working in very dim light, so we threw a flashlight on there too. Sick. You're going to notice all our tools have flashlights on them. Pretty cool. So that's an FLT, so it's going to test the lamp for gas. It's going to test if your ballast is bad, and then if your pins need to change. So it'll tell you before you put anything on the wall what is bad. That's FLT, you guys probably carry something like this pretty soon here. Uh, have you guys seen something like this yet? This is our new uh, hacksaw, 18 little hacksaw. It's been out for about a year now. Something like this, you know, we saw issues with, with guys on ladders and tight form, recent saw, it's a two-handed tool, right? 
uh, almost impossible to use the pipe recorder uh, with one hand, and a lot of guys are cutting stuff on their knees and stuff. This is almost like a one-handed application sawzall. It's good for metal cutting, put the metal cutting blade on there, it's great. Very, very low vibration. And you also have the power of a big reciprocal saw. Yeah. Right, so that's a one-handed tool. Has anybody else seen anything like this from any of our competitors? No. Yeah, uh, what Milwaukee's really doing these days in New York, we definitely sell tools, but we want to be known as a solutions company. Uh, we're going out there with the problems our end users are having and creating solutions for us. That's where we came up with tools like this. You know, we saw our service guys having trouble changing for some light, for some light toaster. Uh, you know, guys, one of the, uh, the um, so ladders, tight corners, hard to use research saw, ready to pet stuff on their leg, you know. Uh, a two hand research saw, really difficult to use, came with a hacksaw. We saw guys using, uh, you know, swing cutters, cutting copper with their hand, getting jacked up hands like that. So we, we mechanized that tool. We turned it, we made a copper cutter. Uh, we're going out there really looking for, for a problem you guys are having, creating solutions for them. Everybody has a drill. Everybody's got an impact. We're really going out there and finding the problems that guys are having on the field and creating the tools for them. Uh, Milwaukee's doing that. So, um, one tool you guys have saw a ton of are these impacts. You guys saw a lot of these? Yep. Yeah, this is like the number one selling tool right now across the country. Our 2691 kit is doing an excellent job of selling this. This is actually the fastest growing tool in the market right now. It's called Impact Drills. And um, one, one reason why I want to mention this, hey, you guys are selling these, might as well try to tack on some impact bits. You guys are using standard steel bits with this, probably snapping the heads off the bits. Uh, there are special bits made for impacts out there. They're called impact rated bits. We make some, other companies make them. We might want to, that might be a little, like, nice, nice little add-on sale. You know, 20, 30 bucks extra to that, that toolkit they just bought. Yeah. They're buying impact. You might want to suggest impact rated bits. Maybe our shockwave set. Yeah. Got some other uh, flyers right over there. But if you're using standard steel bits on these things, you're wasting your money. You're probably snapping the heads off them like every other minute. Uh, you want to use impact rated bits on your impacts. Impact rated bits. Questions on it? Yes, miss. Um, you had said, can you use reciprocating blades on that hacksaw machine? Yes, this, yes. That's Any nice. reciprocal blade will fit on this saw. Wow. Yeah. Sawzall blades fit on that too? Sawzall blades, yeah, that's what a reciprocal blade is. Any length? Any length? 12 inch, 6 inch, 4 inch. Oh. That is, uh, no, no key is required to change. No, we changed that. You're going to see the, the key maybe on our supporter tools. But we've changed that all the battery tells us the quick locks that they call it out. Yeah, quick lock. Do you make that yeah. in an 18 or 24? 18. Yeah. Right here. And we also make it a 12. Oh. What's the impact rated at for output? 1,400 inch pounds of torque, which is uh, best in class impact out there. There's not an impact out there that is better than this one. What is the actual foot pounds on that? Uh, so 1,400 <laughs> divided by 12 is the foot pounds. <laughs> <laughs> If you notice on a cordless cord, cord, uh, cordless saw, it's almost a two-handed tool. The design obviously is a little bit different, right? This is a one-handed tool. Uh, the, the power is virtually the same. The recent might have a little bit more power, uh, but they're virtually the same output and power. Uh, little tight cores and things. You can use this recent saw. Any situation. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Other questions? Did you guys see the differences in the motors? Yeah. yeah. You guys see the difference in the chucks? Yeah. Cool. Hey, uh, on the impact drivers. Yes. Tell them who uses those mainly and why they're using them. Yeah. So, so guys taking out panels and stuff are, are, are using a lot of these things. Any kind of high speed application, you may be using the impact. And you know what? I get a lot of guys even replacing their just regular compact drill with these things now. It's a lot lighter. Um, the head is a lot you know, slimmer, obviously, right? Smaller. Say if I was in like a tight corner or something, and I couldn't like really push down onto the drill. All the torque is right in the head of it. You're not going to get you're not going to get any kind of like kickback, you know? Like a hammer drill, you have a handle on there. There's a reason why there's no handle on this. They use an anvil in here. It kind of hits. That's why you get that loud sound like that. That's the impact. So like in uh, any kind of high speed application, you use an impact drill. The lot of HVAC guys. Uh, 12 volt stuff, you know. You guys sell a lot of 12 volt. Yes, you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> who are you guys selling to? You guys are selling to a lot of service technician guys, MRO guys. That's who's using those 12 volt. We are number one in 12 volt. Uh, in 2007, Bosch had the market pretty much about 80 percent market share. I think it was like a 70 million dollar market. 2008, it's a 150 million dollar market, and Milwaukee owns 80 percent of that market now. So if you guys ain't selling 12 volt, somebody is. Push the 12 volt. It, it, we are number one in 12 volt. 
uh, as far as breadth of line too, we have the most tools part of our 12 volt line. Uh, a lot of these 12 volt line are niche tools that go out. Those are the tools that they're going out there to see the problems they have to create the solutions for. A lot of those tools are in the 12 volt. You want to explain that kit that's got the, the impact driver and that drill? Yeah, so that number one kit as you guys sell the most of is that compact drill, impact drill. It's the number one sold kit in the country. Uh, that compact drill in there is about 400 inch pounds of torque. It's an all steel chuck. They all have battery gauges like this to tell you how much battery life's left. Uh, not too many companies do that. That's a feature that's kind of exclusive to Milwaukee. We'll throw little things like belt hooks for safety and come up with a ladder. It makes sense to hold my drill in my hand like that. I'll strap on your belt like that, right? And climb up safe. Uh, that's the, the compact impact drill um, that we got going on. That's the number one sold kit uh, in the country. I'm trying to think of anything else that's on that kit, really. You guys are selling that kit? Again, think about maybe adding on some of those, those impact rated bits. Should be an easy add on there. If they're using standard steel bits, snap. Let's see real quick. Uh, what they also want to show you. Yeah. Yeah, see this thing yet? Yes. For heated jackets. Jackets. So, you know, we're selling a lot of these to the, 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 the hunters. We have a camo version. We also sell a lot of the bikers. The battery goes right here on the side. Total battery. Six and a half hours of run time. So if you can get up six and a half hours, camping or something like that, crank it up right here. So it'll light up right there. Oh my god. And then uh, I have three settings on this. So I can go medium, the low, and then medium. So three and a half hours on the low the, the, the high setting, six and a half on the low setting. It's waterproof. How much are they? Oh, yeah. That's good. Do they, do they have a cooler on it? Uh, cooler? No. No, no, take it off. Just take it off. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, this is a new product now. This is part of the 12 volt line. It's one product or that. Uh, one tool part of the 12 volt line. We have over 35 plus tools part of that line. Talk to your manager. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate so, it. So, right now we have camouflage. Okay. It's a different material and one comes to the sleeve, and we also have black coming up now. Cool. So, again, like, you know, campers, the outdoors guys, bikers are buying these things up. Uh, we didn't think we were going to do too well with them, but we've done extremely well, and somehow now we're a clothing company, too. It's not my break. <laughs> We're packaging now too. So in the past you've seen our packages all red boxes. It's gonna be red and black now. We're also gonna have these little uh, I don't know if you guys know what that is, it's a smartphone little indicator. So you have a smartphone, you kind of scan that. Yeah, they will shoot you to the website tell you all the info about it. So we got all that in our packaging now, so we're changing the packaging up a little bit. It's gonna be a lot more information, it's look a little better, it's gonna be a lot more durable. So I don't know if you guys have seen our packaging before you toss it around a little bit, it kind of rips a little bit. The, the packaging will be a lot more durable. Uh, not going to be able to rip it too easily. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is kind of walk everybody outside and kind of do this uh, uh, burn up test for you guys. I want to show you guys all the electronics, all those things that we just talked about in action right now. So, uh, all right. Let go. Notice, we can't fuck. Oh, I started smoking. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Here's the smoking. Look at the DeWalt. Oh. <laughs> Battery on fire already. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, two seconds. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, you got a nice little pro over there. I know. <laughs> you got a nice pro going go. with your safety glasses. Wow, that shit's on fire. Blow up. <laughs> wow. But that, that's pretty quick, right? Like, geez, I, I just got. That's battery acid. That's paint on fire. That's the brushes. It smells like crack. It smells like crack. Boom. Oh, it's like a big door. It smells like a big door. Mine's on fire. This guy's is on fire. If you go keep going, this might actually catch on fire. Somebody's gonna actually catch on fire. Thing's on fire. Toast. This thing is a, a really nice flashlight now. This thing can't be used anymore. It's done. Oh wow. Yeah, wow. Put up. Gandhi. This was a very expensive demo. Very revealing. That's what the electronics are doing. 
Like your like Van Julian. I know exactly what I'm doing. Listen, I have a lot of that. Uh, uh, this, this won't work. If you take a heat gun to this battery, you been here? It'll be the temperature will constantly go up. If I put it on the charger, the side of the wood has like that's what that charger that electronic turn on a fan. Charger. I'm very loyal. That's a fire hazard. Oh yeah, these tools are done. I'm Michael. Not the Milwaukee, though. Not the Milwaukee. Not the Milwaukee. So is there a service station around here? That's what you do with these. Anaheim, California is where our Milwaukee service center is. Where? Anaheim, California? You know where the angels are, that's why they wear red. Yeah. <laughs> uh, questions on the burn up test, guys? Oh, pretty crazy, though, huh? So that's if they, I mean, that's if they, you know, and they don't know what they're doing or something. We pay Samsung for the cells, and we actually build them ourselves. That's why we're able to put electronics and stuff in here. Our other guys go to Japan, slap a, 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 a brand on it, and that's their battery. Uh, a lot of people do that. We could have done the same thing with our test measurement stuff. But we built it from the ground up. We actually hired group guys to make this stuff for us. Instead of going to China to have a stamp a name on a, 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 a product, we actually build these from the ground up. What's the I can't say that for everything, but uh, a lot of us, our stuff is still made in the U.S. Corded tools, whole hogs, sawzalls, we made over here, all of our accessories, a lot of battery offers, stuff still can come from overseas. Um, questions that you guys had at all? Pretty there's crazy a, uh, uh, demo out there, huh? Nice demo. Yeah, Thank you. You said there's a five-year warranty and a three-year warranty, right? Yes, sir. Three-year warranty on electronics? Batteries. Batteries. And the five-year warranty on all tools. On all tools. Yep. Yeah. So the other part, the entire part of the drill. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so this, pretty much this thing, right here, five. five years warranty. Anything. In our corded stuff, our, our miter saw, anything we've made tool-wise, it's usually a five-year warranty. Except for our hand tools, which are a lifetime warranty, just like any other hand tool. Okay. And the test of everything is five years old. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the way those drills were smoking out there, is there anything that those drills can success, like, that can smoke like that too? Like if they drill If you try to smoke my drill like that? I mean, how, are they susceptible to fire? Out like that? Are, they, are they susceptible to catching on fire? No. Uh, we have those electronics in there for that reason. It will never catch on fire because we have those electronics. It prevents that from happening. Okay, but if the drill starts smoking, is that covered under the three years? Yes, and we, we, we call that man not the five years. Oh, oh no, no, five years, five years, okay. five years. I'm telling you, this thing, anything back to the drill, as far as if, if it, as long as it didn't drop in a bucket of water or fall off the road, some of these things, you're getting, uh, uh, you're getting fixed. Mm -hmm. Don't run over that car either. Don't run over the car. <laughs> Again, you know what, I say that, <laughs> yeah. honestly, it almost depends on the guy who's fixing it. Over here in Anaheim, you guys are really cool. Uh, they will, they'll be a little bit more lenient with me on some yeah. things if I ask them nicely. Uh, but if you're pretty rude to them, they could say no to you. But about 90% of that stuff, they do come. You guys are pretty cool. If you guys ever have any issues like that, you just let me know. I'll take care of you. Questions on batteries, the motors at all? Guys, I do appreciate the time. Uh, thank you for being here. Let's get right on. Yeah, I don't have too many. If you need contact, you can talk to Ken here as well. Let's thank our purchasing agent, Ken Worgan. Yeah. Setting these things up. Yeah.